you might have heard me say Bactria is the easiest faction to play as in Rome 2. However, as you are about to experience in this story, one choice, one stupid decision is enough to turn all your neighbors against you, turning this easy campaign into a battle for survival. This all began as any regular campaign. We started recruiting for our army, researching the things we needed, and spending practically all our treasury on infrastructure. You know, the basics and all that. Perfectly in line with the Divided Empire Economic Guide you can find in the top right corner. After unifying our province, I plan to fortify our lands while waiting for the Seleucid satraps to rebel. Which actually didn't take all that long to happen. I mean, as you can see, we still have to pacify our own provinces. There's nothing our own armies can't handle, but they won't be able to guard our lands forever as our food supply is about to run out. This made me start eyeing up our neighbor Hariva. To be fair, they hold two of our natural expansion routes, so war was fated to happen anyway. It was a bit scary as their two armies disappeared right after we declared war on them. It did encourage us to build up a second army though. Oh boy, we are gonna need it. After capturing Magian, we had to fend off a sizable counterattack led by her rival's impressive elephant contingent. But you know us, we are too clever to fall for that. We have the farmlands we desire. Honestly, this was where I wanted our military conquest to stop. Just for a few turns so we could stabilize our realm. However, as both Shranka and Parthia joined the side of our enemies, that wasn't an option. The situation in itself wasn't too bad yet. We have allies of our own, you know, for now. As we waited for our armies to replenish, Parthia was wiped out. This means we were able to send two armies south for the strategically crucial town of Area. It was quite fortified, but as they sallied out on the field, the odds became more even. Our cavalry created a barrier of sorts, while the rest of our infantry linked up. However, the trees concealed the fact that all of the hostile infantry were focused on one flank. The only reason we survived was due to our faction leader sacrificing himself. Such a heroic action will never be forgotten. Too bad we actually ended up losing the city right away in the middle of our conversion process. So we practically lost two armies worth of manpower plus a general for nothing. Oh wait, this attack on area? It wasn't exactly the bad decision I talked about. It comes next. Another faction known as Atropad Khan swooped in, besieged and then also occupied the city, right before we were able to enact revenge. I was absolutely furious. Literally, I was like, we spilled blood for these walls. This city should be ours. So I took it. Honestly, if I had known the consequences of this decision, I would have never done it. The true question is, was this worth it? Absolutely fucking not. Both our armies were crippled with merely a small regiment further north made up of levies to protect our kingdom. And the land is rebelling so that is great. One of the many Atropad Khan subjects took advantage of our weakened state. It was a pure miracle we prevailed. But it was at the cost of our last hoplite forces. We can't stay here, but we can't leave either, as Atropad Khan is already counterattacking. Our nomad allies managed to hold them off this first time. They won't be able to do it again. Our small army returned to Bactria to muster more men for our army, but as I didn't think we would even need the barracks in this province ever again, I had already demolished it and converted the land into more economy. While he was there, we also discovered how horrible the public order was. We had to turn our tax rate all the way down to avoid rebellions. This public order threat was made worse by the fact that it was an actual slave revolt. So far, the other uprisings have been dealt with by our allies. But this one would be too much for them. This internal threat was made worse by our discoveries in the west. Four armies are coming for us. We neither had the manpower nor time to create a new army to save our disastrous situation. All we could do was try to fortify Area, and with a threat this severe, 
Time can only be gained through victory. Our only real mistake here was forgetting how few infantry units we had. I mean, our skirmishers held their own, but damn. That battle gave us about one more turn, so no more than that. At least our new barracks on the front lines allowed us to field three new hoplites. The army we defeated was immediately replaced by another. We tried to use stealth to slow them down, but failed. So instead, we brought down the northern levies as reinforcements, which led to the Atropat Khan forces vanishing into the fog of war. We quickly figured out it was because they planned to march towards our capital through the northern and less fortified rounds. This means our reinforcements couldn't abandon their post. So as we only had one decent army, we had to find a way to march them north too. It was made possible by assassinating and launching an absurd assault on a fortification in the south that was pinning us down. This victory was followed by us subjugating their lands. Instead of the northern army, we called for the smaller retinue guarding Arachosia in the southeast to help defend Araya. Oh, and the rebels? Every single time our nomadic allies dealt with them. So that's fine. It was probably the only good thing about the situation we are in right now. However, this one time, they couldn't actually seem to finish the job. Hence, we plotted to pinch at them the next turn. But that scheme never came to pass. Our only farming settlement was lost. A counterattack was set in motion, but we didn't follow through with it after receiving the news of yet another and even more significant threat from the south. All of you probably expected a war with the Morian sooner or later. Well, here it is. This meant our two inferior armies had to leave everything behind to dodge a Persian attack. It was a close call, but in the end, we made it back safely into the walls of our capital. But look at this. We are nowhere near out of danger. It's not even these not so distant armies we have to worry about, but the ones just marching around in our lands unopposed. Like, what could I have done here? Instead of confronting us in area, they just moved around, hitting our client state in the south. This vile act of theirs had to be punished. And there is only one proper way to enact revenge. With fire. This battle was quickly followed up by an attack on the Morian army. This heroic victory accomplished probably as much as you did all day. Nothing. We just butchered two armies, but three more were about to take their place. Our units have just been weakened by this, nothing else. Can you see how horrible this decision earlier was? Back up in the north, we had formed an army of levies to hopefully retake the lost farmland. But as we moved into hostile territory, we immediately had to fight a Persian army. This victory was good and all, but as you might have realized, there is a pattern to this. Cut one army down, and another takes its place. Only this time we fled to a favorable location. Or so I thought. I tried to steal back the farmland from right under their nose, as they believed it was undefended. Oh, how wrong I was. This army now found itself surrounded by two new hostile forces. We are also in a standoff with two Atropakan armies in the south, by the way, along with the Morians, who are trying to export our situation and are moving for our homeland. So these armies are completely new. So we made a bold escape through Nomai territory, which actually was trespassing. So that's actually not that good that we're doing this. In terms of the Morian threat, I sent whatever levies I could acquire with our limited budget south into attrition territory to stop them. This meant that we left our capital unguarded. So now the Atropakan armies were able to lay siege to Bactra. 
Our entire economy is now in red, by the way. Just look at how crazy this is. With our homeland threatened and as another Atrapakan army arrived in Araya, along with the rebellion, we had to abandon the city. The siege of our capital was something the Morians were eager to participate in as well, with them just moving past our defensive position and straight towards our core regions, cutting off any possible reinforcements from the south. Just so you understand our situation, this is the location of all hostile armies, threatening our lands. Defended by just one reasonable army which apparently is suffering attrition from lack of supplies. This major threat culminated in the siege of Bactra. We knew fighting for victory was impossible, but time. If we hold out for long enough, our reinforcements from the south could find another way up here to break the siege. Bactra had multiple layers of walls to help us in that objective. That and the army we formerly had sent on a counter-attack made it back just in time. Or so we thought. Their pursuers had caught up with them. There was no time for them to get inside the walls. Quickly realizing the battle out in the open was a lost cause, the commander of that army abandoned his men in favor of the safety within the city. Luckily, our garrison still defended the walls, even coming as far as to trapping a large portion of that Trapatkan troops in a choke point. Our defenders were running low on stamina, their morale depleting, and basically everything was turning to shit. But the time was ticking. It was only a matter of time before we actually survived. We just have to hold on.